Global Ocean Commission. Mr. Mil Miliband, thank you very much for being with us. Certainly, Good to be with you. The search for Flight 370 has certainly illustrated how difficult it is because there have been many false leads, as we've been saying. Um, it's a vast piece of ocean that we're looking at, but that is just a small example of how difficult your work is right now to clean up what is essentially some have described as a dumping ground. You're right. There's too much going into the ocean yeah. and too much coming out, and it's the wrong things going in. I was astonished. We've got this three-day meeting of our Global Ocean Commission today. Today I learned 10% of the world's plastic ends up in the sea. That's 30 million tonnes a year being dumped at sea, and a lot of it ends up in the high seas, beyond the 200 miles limit that's the responsibility of every nation. Mm. And so practically half of the Earth's surface is really ungoverned. Mm. certainly undergoverned and is the kind of dumping ground that you describe but it's also the place where too much fish is taken out so there isn't going to be the the nutrients the, the the food security issues that are really raised by that kind of extraction on an industrial scale in a dangerous way well see that's interesting because there's some who have described that the overfishing in the oceans right now is perhaps the most dangerous part perhaps more um more damaging to our oceans than any human activity other than that put together i think climate change is probably the most dangerous mm. Uh, not just for the ocean but for humans in general but it's certainly true that overfishing is an ecological threat it's a food security threat because over a billion people in the in the world today depend on the ocean for their protein but it's also an economic threat because the world bank estimates that with the subsidies with the loss in tourism that comes from the over uh, from the depletion of the ocean resource the cost is about 50 billion dollars a year so it's a big economic cost too to all of us when you see more increased trade around the world and the seas being a vital route for countries uh, to to work with each other this is this matter could only get worse well I don't think it's designed to get worse yeah. I mean we do have a UN convention on the law of the sea if its letter and its spirit was properly implemented there would be free passage but there'd also be sustainable use of the ocean resource remember but that doesn't always work out that way you're Whenever absolutely UN, right uh, 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 recommendations are out there or laws are out there right now it doesn't always work out that well, that means we the people of this planet aren't actually managing our resource properly and you're absolutely right that we're not there's too much short-termism mm. too much self-interest not enough thinking beyond the next five to ten years and if there's an economic cost an ecological cost then we've got to start joining the dots and saying there must be a better way of doing things. That's what the Global Ocean Commission is trying to do. We think we can make a difference. And what's interesting is that if we can ensure that the high seas are not overexploited, we can actually replenish the resource. These, this, the, the ocean has a remarkable capacity to renew itself, but we've got to give it the chance. The interesting thing is we can talk about what we need to do, uh, what we should do. We can list out all the recommendations that are out there. I mean, I think from a from a, a moral perspective, we understand that at least for future generations, things need to change. But you mentioned climate change, and that was we were talking about that 20, 30 years ago, and still it's slow in in changing right now. It's People's slow, attitudes. and it's going in the wrong direction, and the consequences are becoming. Yeah. Uh, more dire. I think our job in the Global Ocean Commission, we're producing our final report in uh, the summer this year, in June. This is our final meeting here in Hong Kong. We've got to sound the alarm. Yeah. We've got to have some practical policies that political leaders can actually run with. And we've got to build a coalition with the private sector and with consumers as well as with governments. I think you and your viewers would be shocked to know that while you're talking about airlines and you're saying what's happened to the tracking devices, fishing vessels don't need any tracking device. So there's no tracking at all of the fishing vessels that are going out onto the high seas. There are some very basic things that we need to get right. And if we do so, and if we can get that coalition I talked about of people and government and business, then I think we can make some quite fast progress. What's the top priority here? Do you think that at the, when, it, when you look at it from a, an economic perspective, when it affects people's pockets, only then will people start to listen? Well, I think we're all paying twice for the fish on our plate now. We're paying the price on the menu and we're paying through the subsidy regime. So there's about, just for, for, the, for, the, just for the subsidies, it's about $35 billion a year. Now, Europe is getting its act together after 20 or 25 years when it's not been a good example, but Europe is getting its act together. In Asia, it's the case that five countries in Asia are the top five countries for fishing on the high seas.
and that's 10% of the total cash. So there are some big issues of responsibility here. Yes, the Western countries have to step up, but there's also some need for some work here in Asia. Before I let you go, I want to switch gears just a little bit, and uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you this question. As former UK Foreign Secretary, when you look at the situation right now in uh, Ukraine, a lot of diplomatic eff effort is going into trying to bring this crisis under control. Um, there's a carrot and stick approach when it comes to Russia. Is diplomacy going to work right now? We are in the 11th hour. This referendum is going to take place on Sunday. And by all uh, intents and purposes, based on what we understand from the ground, Crimeans will vote to join Russia. Where is diplomacy then? Well, there isn't an alternative to diplomacy, is the truth. And the absolute key is unity in defending the most basic laws of international relations. And those are about the sovereignty and territorial integrity of States, as well as about the protection of minorities in them. And there are minorities within Crimea, as well as Crimea being a minority within the Ukraine as a whole. And I think the challenge for Secretary Kerry that you showed on your program earlier, for uh, others who are concerned about this, and there'll be people, there'll be countries in this region, sometimes who, which ally with Russia, that'll be very concerned about the prospect of part of a state being excised and joining another state. I think that for those, the question is the unity of response. And for those of us, uh, I used to live in Europe, I live in New York now running a charity. Uh, the energy links are obviously important, and that's a two-way relationship. Europe has to be unified in how it engages with, with Russia. And I would say unity is the issue. It's not about a choice between economics or military, because there isn't a military option uh, in the Ukraine. But across a wide range of issues, there has to be a force standing up for international humanitarian, uh, international law, including international humanitarian law, which is at stake in a number of places, Ukraine, but you've also featured Syria. That's another area where there needs to be unity in standing up for the most basic aspects of international relations. David Miliband, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Uh, actually, we're going to take a look at the weather conditions right now. Uh, let's go to Mari Ramos at the World Weather Center. Mari? Hey, Monita, we're going to go ahead and uh, stay on the topic 